I'm going to work out problems one, two, and five from the, the mock test because they're all kinematics problems. So for problem number one, a car slows down from, can we, can you guys work on this test and not, maybe not talk loudly while I'm trying to film something at the very least? Okay. On number one, a car slows down from 34 meters per second to 12 meters per second in 17 seconds. Right, what's its acceleration? Um, do we have that formula? Do we have the acceleration formula? Oh yeah, I didn't write it on the board. That's sad. That's sad. It is, it is here. It is that the final velocity is the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. And that's the one that I, I would choose to use for the first question. So one A, I'm going to use V final is V initial plus acceleration times time. So 34 is 12 plus A times, whoops, it's not squared, sorry. Just A times uh, 17, right? Um, which is, of course, going to be, um, it's going to be uh, 12 minus 34 divided by 17, which ends up being a negative acceleration. Does it make sense that it's a negative acceleration? It's been a while since we did these, right? So 12 minus 34 parentheses divided by 17, negative 1.2941 meters per second squared, right? No, because when you do it, um, when you do it, you're going to be, uh, oh, I put them in there wrong, didn't I? I did it wrong, didn't I? I put the numbers in there wrong. I was like confused about that. It should be that the final velocity is 12 and that's 34, right? Now you're right, yeah? I knew what the answer was. I just couldn't plug the numbers into the formula simply, right? Okay. But anyway, it ends up being this. Right, and then 1B says, what distance did it cover in that time? You could use the acceleration. I'm gonna choose to use this formula here to find the distance. Okay, so for B, 1B, I'm gonna use it. X is 1 half V initial plus V final times the time, right? So it's 1 half 34 plus 12 times 17. 0.5 times parentheses, 34 plus 12 times 17. And indeed, we get 391. There's that. Yeah. So just be careful. You know, if the velocity is changing, don't be unclever and use this one to try to find the how far it went. Right. Any questions about number one? Are we okay? And then number two is um, two is a different one. So for two x v i v f a and t, this airplane starts at rest, reaches fifty four meters per second. The airplane is strangely capitalized, uh, and it's eight hundred and twelve meters long, right? And its its initial velocity is zero. And the final is uh, 54 meters per second. And we want to know what the acceleration is. And then we want to know halfway down the runway, uh, what's, the, um, what's, the, what's the velocity halfway down the runway, right? Um, and it's not 26 because it's actually, anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll see. It's not trivial, right? Okay. Um, to find the acceleration with those three things, I would choose this guy to find the acceleration, yeah. V final squared is V initial squared just because it's you can do it in one step and I'm lazy, right? So I'm going to say um, the acceleration, the final velocity squared, 54 squared. I'm using V final squared equals V initial squared. All right, so that's 0 squared plus 2 times A times 812. And so A is going to be 54 squared divided by twice 812. What is that? I hope that's the right answer. Huh?
54 squared divided by 2 divided by 812. Is that 1.79? Six, six, five, five, six, six. Yeah? That's the right one. 1.80 is the right, right? Okay. And then what is the velocity halfway down the runway? Why is it not half the velocity halfway down? Because it's accelerating. It spends a lot more time on the first half than the second half. Yeah, so the velocity is going to be way more than half, right? It covers that last half in less, much less time, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do to do this is I'm going to use this acceleration. I'm going to use the 1.795566. I'm going to store that in A because I'm so lazy I don't even want to write it down. And I'm going to use, instead of 812 meters, I'm going to use... 406, does that work? Yeah? Yeah? yeah. And now I'm going to just I'm gonna use the same formula. I'm going to use this formula again to find this, right? So V final squared is V initial squared plus 2 times A times X. The final is what we want. That's 0 squared plus 2 times 1.795566. Six, six. Why am I writing so many numbers down there? Because I don't, I don't want to be off, right? So if I'm using some number that I've rounded, that's not the real thing, so I'm going to use a lot of them, right? And then I'm going to use 406, right? So isn't, isn't the final velocity just going to be this whole thing square rooted, right? So the square root of parentheses 2 times that answer, that 1.795566, et cetera, right? which I stored in A uh, times 406 to the 38.18. Is that right? Yes. Uh, meters per second. And these are, this is meters per second squared for that. Yeah. And then number five is another kinematics, but it's the horizontal and vertical, right? So this is number five, horizontal, vertical. What's our horizontal velocity or acceleration in the absence of recent trips to Taco Bell or jet propulsion? It's zero, right? This guy's zero. These guys are the same, right? They equal one thing. And really, the only formula on this side is just V is X over T, or X is VT, or T is X over V. That's all we ever do on this side, right? This side, though, is the whole meal deal. X, V, I, V, F, A, T. The acceleration is always negative 9.8, isn't it? Right? These are cliff problems, and it, on the test, it's just cliff problems. So cliff problems, what's your vertical initial velocity? If you only go horizontally, your initial velocity vertically is zero. So for a cliff problem, right? And that's all I put on there. I could have put an arc problem. You could have done it, but I didn't. So you don't have to, right? And then this one, um, the cliff is 9.5 meters tall. Where does that go? Vertical displacement is the in going off the cliff, we're going to go down 9.5 meters, right? It's like cliff, bless you, right? We're going to go down 9.5 meters, right? And then um, how far from the base does the ball land? So apparently we don't really give a flying rat's took us about the final vertical velocity. We can just skip right to time, can't we? What's the fastest way to get time? Yeah, VIT plus 1 FAT squared, is that? Yeah, yeah that's, that's the one I would choose. I don't know if that's what you were saying, but right. So um, normally that's hard, but because of have an initial velocity, it's actually easy. It becomes x is one half a t squared, doesn't it? Right. So this formula here gets really simple when that's zero. It's just one half a t squared, right? And so my time is going to be what is it? It's going to be the square root of twice nine point five divided by. 9.8, the, the acceleration, right? Something like that. The square root.